So I've recently been playing around with the updated MacBook Pros. Mine specifically is the 16 inch version with the M1 Pro processor, not the highest end M1 Max. And I've already done a video where I checked out the gaming performance on the MacBook Pro. We can check out right up there. But today I actually wanted to see the mining performance on one of these bad boys, especially with the updated GPUs. I'm curious what type of mining performance is there? What type of efficiencies do we have? I'm wondering, could you even pay off your MacBook Pro by mining a little bit on the side. So we're gonna be investigating that here today. Now, in case you haven't heard of M1 mining before, this has actually already been developed. People have compiled binaries for you to be able to actually run this yourself, which I'll have linked in the video description in case you wanna take a stab at it yourself. But we have it here, the ETH miner for M1 because we're going to be trying to mine Ethereum on this M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So it's as simple as downloading this file and then copying the file from your downloads folder over into your applications folder. And then when you run it, what you'll find is, is typical with many miners, it just doesn't allow you to do it because it's from an unidentified developer. So you hit okay and you go over to system preferences, security and privacy, make sure you're on the general tab and then you have to click open anyway so that it will request that you can do it even though you can't verify the developer since it's from GitHub. So that's it right there, that's the ETH miner. You can see that my Mac is trying to open it with the text editor. So in order to get this application to run, you actually have to make sure that the MacBook allows you to do that. So to pull that off, it's pretty simple. You just go over to your utilities, you open up terminal, and you type in cd forward slash applications. And that's gonna make sure that you're dealing with things that are in the applications folder, which is exactly where ETHminer is. Now from there, you're gonna type in chmod plus x, and then type in ethminer dash m1. And what this will do is tell the Mac that this is now an executable file for you to open. From there, you can try to open ETH miner, but you'll find that nothing happens because it says that there are no arguments specified. So you need to create a shell script for you to be able to tell ETH miner what exactly you want it to do. So in order to do that, you double click on text edit. Once you have the text editor open, you're gonna tell it to run ETH miner. So you do that by typing dot forward slash ETH miner dash M1. Now you need to tell it where to mine to. So you're gonna type in space dash P and then enter stratum colon forward slash forward slash and then type in your Ethereum wallet address. Now you can get yours from MetaMask like I did or you might have one already, but it's fairly simple. You just copy your address, you go back on over to the text editor and you paste that bad boy in there. And then you hit period and you type out whatever you wanna call this client. So I'm gonna call mine the M1 Pro because it's the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, like with any Ethereum setup, which I won't go through here, but you can watch my video on how to mine it Ethereum, you're going to need an Ethereum pool to actually do everything with. I'm just gonna choose Ethermine because it is one of the most popular pools and in order to direct your mining client there, you just type in at and then choose the server that you want, which mine is us1.ethermine.org and then the port for it, which for me is 444. Now from there, you're going to change this to a plain text format so that you're actually able to run this as a shell script, convert that to plain text, which is great. So then you're gonna go over to file, save, and then type in what you want to call it. I'll call mine ethmining.sh. The sh is really important because then that means it is a shell script and you make sure that it's saved into the applications folder because you're going to be running the application from there. So you save and now that is good to go. You, if we head on back to our applications folder, you can see that the shell script is now there, but when you try to open it, nothing happens besides it opens in the text editor. So we need to make this executable just like we did with ethmining. So all you're gonna do is redirect back to the applications, unless you already still have your terminal open, in which case that's perfect. You type in chmod plus x, ethmining.sh and that will get that done. Now you're going to want to run this application which will start mining for you, which you do by typing in dot period forward slash ethmining.sh and now you can see that we are up and mining on our M1 Pro. Now as I've started mining, you can see that my MacBook has slowed down considerably. I'm, I'm gonna click 
and it takes a few seconds to now load up the web page because it's actively using the system to mine. The regular M1 Mac mined anywhere from two to two and a half mega hash per second. As you can see with this M1 Pro, we are now sitting in the region of 5.2 to 5.5 mega hash per second, which is honestly not too bad. If we come take a look over here at our power draw, which by the way, if you wanna do this on Mac, you have to open a terminal, type in sudo forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash power metrics, and then type in the password to your Mac, give it a second, And you can see it loads out all of the power details of what your Mac is consuming. You see that the GPU is consuming roughly 5.8 watts during all of the mining that's happening and with me running the screen. Our total package power, so for everything including the CPU, we're looking at closer to 13.6 watts. Now from the actual power brick, based on my power meter, it says that we're pulling in about 17 watts, which is honestly not too bad. So now based on that 5.28, I really have to turn this off because I can't navigate websites. I'm turning off the mining so that I can do other things. After letting it mine for a little bit, the average mega hash that I've been able to achieve with this MacBook Pro is roughly 5.8 mega hash. Now, if we type that into a mining calculator, such as this one over on Crypto Compare, we go over to Ethereum, we type in an average hash rate of 5.8 mega hash, our total power consumption of 17 watts. My average electricity cost is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And you can see that I am making a profit of $12.82 a month on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now, if we just take the purchase price of this M1 Mac, which was $26.99 excluding tax, and we divide it by the monthly profit that I'm making, we're sitting at 210 months to pay that off. Let's divide that by 12. And I only need 17 years of current profitability levels in order to pay off my MacBook. Book Pro just by mining. Obviously with a profit per day of 42 cents, we are not going to be getting much return on investment with this MacBook Pro, but you can make some profit by mining in case you want to. One of the benefits obviously of the MacBook Pro is number one, that it's whisper quiet. I hear no fans going even when it's mining, as well as the fact that it doesn't even really get warm to the touch and it's only consuming 17 watts of power in order to bring out that mining performance. So based on that data, this M1 Pro, for every mega hash you consume, you use three watts of power, which is actually one of the more efficient GPUs that's actually out there. The most efficient GPU that I could find for Ethereum was the Radeon 7, which gets about 2.6 watts for every mega hash, which is remarkable for one of the best ones on the market. But if you look at dedicated GPUs besides the Radeon 7, the M1 Pro is actually one of the most efficient miners out there. Now, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't have the M1 Max, so I don't know exactly the extents that these GPUs can go to, but I would presume based on the fact that this is the 16 core GPU version, if it scales linearly based on that, you should be maybe looking between 10 and 11 mega hash for hopefully just under double the power draw, which would again get you in the same profitability region, but with a worse payoff because you're starting at a higher base price. Now, obviously mining on a Mac doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is not something that you would necessarily buy max four and then mine on them. Apple's high price tags make sure that that's not going to be happening. You're not going to be losing out on stock just due to miners, unlike the GPU crisis that's currently going on. But it is an intriguing experiment, number one. And then number two, in case you're interested in doing this, just as it's lying around sparingly in case you want to run this, it's not like it'd be unprofitable for you to do so. And it's not like it would disturb your environment to just be mining Ethereum in the background. However, I will note if you don't set any sort of performance cap for the mining, it is going to slow down your computer tremendously. I couldn't even switch tabs on the web browser while I was mining because it gets that bogged down. But this was an interesting experiment. That being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.